So what is the function of fingers? So the fingers collect the DC generated current. DC current, which is the electrons. You can see that we have large number of free electrons. So how can we collect this? We collect them using the fingers. It collects all of the negative electrons, free electrons generated by the sunlight, and it delivers them to the pass bar. Okay, it delivers them to the pass bars. Okay, then we will have the uh, pass bar itself, which have large number of electrons, will be connected with other pass bars to increase the total output voltage of the panel. So we find that each one cell, each block of this one is has a voltage between, generates a voltage between 0.5 and 0.9 volt. So when we connect uh, this uh, panels, these panels in, uh, these uh, cells in series, we will be able to increase the total voltage. And the cells are connected in parallel to increase the total current. So how can we achieve this? By using something which is called the tab wires and pass wires. So if you look at here, we have one cell here, another cell, another cell. You can see we have this pass bar, pass bar, and another pass bar, another pass bar. Now you can see this one and this one and this one. Now this one generates, let's say, 0.5 volt. And this one generates 0.5 volt. And this one generates 0.5 volt. So when we connect connect them together like this, connect them together like this, you will find that the total voltage, since they are in series, will be 1.5 volt. So we increase the total voltage by connecting them together in series. Okay. So how can we achieve this? By using the tab wires. You can see this wire, this wire that con connects between these two uh, cells. This wire is called the tab wire. Okay, this wire. Okay, tab wire, another tab wire connects the cells together. Okay, okay. Now, as you can see here, uh, so the tab wire can be added manually or automatically to the solar cell bus bar which connect, connect the individual cells in series with a low series resistance, okay? Now, what is the function of bus wire? So we have here this bus wire, as this is a tap wire and this large bus bar. You can see it, it connects the cells in parallel. Now, how is this happening? If you look at here, you will find that uh, this one have a current, let's say, 0.5 ampere and this cell also provides 0.5 ampere this one 0.5 ampere okay so this bus bar connects all of this parallel which means that the total current inside the bus bar i from the nodal analysis it will be 1.5 ampere so the uh, uh, clusters of tab wires strings are connected in parallel by using the pass wires, okay, which delivers the cumulative current from all the cell to the BV junction box. Remember that the BV junction box is the final two terminals, the final positive and the final negative of the BV panel itself. Don't worry, we will see this in the next uh, lessons, okay? So, uh, what you will learn from here, you will learn that bus bars are connected in series to increase the total uh, cell voltage. We connect them in parallel to increase the total current. Okay, now the bus connected in parallel by using bus wires connected in series by using tab wire. Now we have also different types of bus bars. So if you look at this panel, for example, you will find that one, two, and three pass bars. However, you will find another panel, one, two, three, four, five, five lines or five uh, pass bars. So what is the difference? You will find that we have two pass bar, three pass bar, four pass bar, five pass bar, different configurations for BV panel. Which one is the best? 
So first, the three bus bar, it is the most common solar cell design uh, or the most common solar cell design involves the three parts, uses the three bus bars printed onto, uh, onto the cell. Also, we have the five bus bar, which is the trend, the leading trend. And you will find that the higher the number of bus bars, the better. Now, why is this? Because the high number of bus bars reduces the distance between the bus bars, which reduces the internal resistance loss. You can see that electrons would like to travel and go to this one, travel and go to the other one. However, if we look at here, we have a smaller distance. Here we have a very small distance. So smaller distance or smaller finger, it means that we will have a smaller internal resistance which means that the, according to Ohm's law, we will have larger number, a larger amount of current. So the high number of bus bars, it reduces the finger length, which means the finger resistance will be reduced. So additional bus bars create lower resistance between cells. You can see here uh, more bus bars, or you can think about it that parallel, more parallel branches more parallel branches means the total resistance is lower okay or you can think about it like it's very small distance and here we have large distance okay so if this resistance is r let's say for example r over five smaller resistance smaller electrical losses so as you can see according to ohm's law that as the resistance goes down the current will go up for the same voltage which means that the total power generated from the panel will increase because power equal to VI. So when we have larger number of bus bars, it means we will have lower resistance or higher electrical um, current or electric, higher electric current, which means higher current, higher generated power. Okay. Okay. So you will find that the result of the additional bus bars is that the solar panels are about 2% more efficient than uh, the one with lower amount of bus bars. Now the question is, uh, is 2% is really, really uh, effective or not? You will find that the 2% is really effective uh, compared to the solar panels. Now why is this? Now you will find that we have different types of BV cells. We have the monocrystalline silicon solar panels. We have the polycrystalline or multicrystalline solar panels. We have the amorphous or sun film solar panels. And we have the hybrid silicon solar panels. Different types of panels which uses different type of BV cells. So in order to understand if this 2% really effective or not, you will find we will need to understand these four types. Okay, so the first type, which is called the monocrystalline silicon solar panel. This is a figure representing one panel, which is formed of a cell, like the, which is this one, called the monocrystalline cell. Now, what does this mean? You will find that this panel is one of the most effective solar panels. Not the most effective, but it is one of the most effective or the one which is available in the market. It has an efficiency between 15 to 24 percent. They are cut out from a single source of silicon. That's why they are called mono. Mono means uh, one or single. That's why monocrystalline means that it is cut out from a single source of silicon. They require less space than other types of, of uh, BV panels because they produce more energy and can produce up to four times more power than the cell and film solar panels, which we will discuss. They also last longer and perform better at low light. Okay. The only disadvantage of this one is the cost, which means it is not the first choice for the homeowners. Okay. So you have to understand higher efficiency means it will need number of panels required to achieve a certain power will be reduced okay however low efficiency low efficiency means we will need higher number of panels 
to achieve the same function. So higher efficiency means we will have high cost. Okay. Also, this type of finance is affected by dirt or shade, which can break the circuit. As we will learn about about the shading effect, the shading effect we will learn about it in the course, and you will understand how it affects our uh, PV panels. The second type is called the polycrystalline or multicrystalline solar panels. You can see this is a, a multicrystalline panel. You can see it's really really a dirty type of solar panels you can see not like this one if you look at this one really clean um, and uh, beautiful uh, solar panel compared to this one you can find very random um, uh, panel okay why is this because you will find that it has a low efficiency between 13 to 16 percent and polycrystalline are often seen as a better economic choice because they are much cheaper than the monocrystalline. Here, why they are called polycrystalline? Because they are made of several uh, types of silicon, which are melted together and then recrystallized. Okay. However, the monocrystalline has is formed of a single type of. Um, uh, of silicon okay however the polycrystalline several types of uh, silicons are melted together and form this uh, weird uh, shape okay the only problem of polycrystalline it has lower efficiency which means that we will need large number of panels to achieve the same function so here is a small comparison between the monocrystalline and the polycrystalline Okay, so this is a polycrystalline and this is a monocrystalline. Okay, now another type which is called the amorphous or the thin film solar panels, which is this one. Okay, this is called the thin film and it can be installed in, a, um, in areas in which the space it does not really matter. So uh, it has an efficiency of 7%, very low efficiency. And it is considered as the least efficient on the market, but they are the cheapest option. They work well in low light, even when light, and they are made of a non-crystalline silicon that can be transferred in a thin film into another material such as glass. You can see here, we can add it in building like this, okay, and it can be used to convert the solar energy into electrical energy. However, it has a very low efficiency compared to the other types, the mono or the polycrystallines. The main advantage is that it can be mass produced at much cheaper cost, but it is more suitable for situations where space is not a big issue. Another uh, the disadvantage of this one is also it is not generally used for residential uh, purposes and will degrade quicker than crystalline suds. Okay, so usually we don't use this in the residential application or in our home. Because why? Because why is this? Because it has a very low efficiency, seven percent. The last type which we will discuss is called the hybrid silicon solar panels. Okay. Usually, you will not find them in the market. Why? Because they have a, the highest or the best efficiency. The hybrid solar panels are made from a mix of amorphous and monocrystalline cells to produce the maximum efficiency. Now, they are a, there are a variety of types of hybrid cells and they are still very much at the research and development stage, which why they are currently a more expensive option. We don't use them generally. Generally, we don't use them. Um, you will find that one of the researches which I found is that in 2018, the hybrid silicon solar cell in research, uh, as I remember in uh, journal of Nature Energy, Nature Energy, it reached a 33.3% uh, conversion efficiency, very high efficiency, the highest recorded efficiency. Okay. And of course, it is still in the laboratory stage. It is not in the market. Okay. 
However, it's considered as one of the best types and it has a very important efficiency which can help us help reduce the uh, reduce the amount of uh, panels required. Okay? So in this lesson, we discussed an introduction to solar uh, energy. We discussed the different uh, components of a solar energy system. We discussed the construction of PV panel and how a solar cell works. And we discussed the different types of solar cells.